Hi, this is Ajith here. In this video, we are going to discuss the class Cystoda of phylum Platyhelminthes. Cystoda comprises the most evolved group of flatworms. All cystodes are endoparasitic in the gut of vertebrates. The body of cystodes are flattened and ribbon-like and hence the cystodes are commonly called tapeworms. The body is divisible into a scolex, a narrow neck and a segmented trunk or strobila. The strobila consists of segments called proglottids. The body is covered by a dynamic metabolically active syncytial layer called the tegument. The tegument serves the functions of protection, absorption, excretion and gaseous exchange. The scolex has four suckers. The cystodes being endoparasites do not possess digestive system or sense organs. Cystodes are hermaphrodites. Each proglotid contains a single male or female sex organ. The life cycle in cystode is complex and it involves a definitive host which is always a vertebrate and one or more intermediate hosts are also found. Cystodes comprises of about 5000 species. The most common examples are Tinea solium and Tinea saginata. In this video, we will discuss Tinea solium in detail. Tinea solium is commonly called pork tapeworm. The sexually reproducing adult worm is a parasite in the intestine of man and the asexual forms of the parasites are found in the muscles of pig. Man is therefore the definitive host and the pig is the intermediate host. Tinea solium is cosmopolitan in distribution. The body of Tinea solium is segmented, elongated and ribbon-like. It is dorsoventrally flattened and may attain a length of up to 5 meters. It is opaque white in color and the body is divisible into three regions, the scolex, neck and the strobila. The scolex resembles a pinhead and measures about 1 mm in diameter. At the apex of the scolex is a dome-shaped rostellum armed with 28 to 32 curved hooks arranged in two circlets. Around the sides of the scolex are four large suckers. The suckers are devoid of hooks. The rostella hook and suckers help as a hold flask organ with the help of which the tapeworm firmly attaches to the intestinal mucosa. Often the scolex remains buried in the mucosa. The neck is a constricted region behind the scolex and this flattened region is a zone of proliferation that is the region from which new segments are budded off. The strobila forms the bulk of the body and it consists of a chain of about 1000 segments or proglottids. The proglottid progressively increase in size towards the posterior extremity and since the neck is the area of segmentation, the youngest proglottids are seen nearer to the neck while the older ones are found towards the terminus. The anterior proglottids are immature, broader than long and are devoid of reproductive organs. The middle proglottids are mature, squarish in shape and contain male and female reproductive organs. The mature proglottids alternatively bear on the right and left margin a tiny protuberance called the genital papilla with a small genital pore at the tip. The posteriormost proglottids are called gravid proglottids and they are longer than broad and contain highly branched uterus containing eggs. The body wall or tegument of Stinia solium is a metabolically active layer. The outer plasma membrane of the tegument is thrown into specialized microvilli with dense piney tips called microthrix. Below this is a syncytial cytoplasm containing numerous mitochondria, rhabditiform organelles, vacuoles and vesicles. The cell bodies are seen deep inside the body wall or as an inner layer with cytoplasmic extensions into the outer layer. And between the outer and the inner layer, circular and longitudinal muscles are seen. Since the parasite do not have a gut, the tegument acts as an absorptive surface the microthrix greatly increases its surface area. The tegument affords protection and probably helps in attaching the parasite to the intestinal wall of its host. The excretory system consists of flame cells, tubules and four longitudinal collecting ducts, two dorsal and two ventral. 
The ventral canals meet and open at the tip of the last proglottid as a median excretory pore. The nervous system consists of an anterior nerve mass in the scolex and two lateral longitudinal nerve cords. Cross fertilization occurs where there is more than one worm in the host gut, but self fertilization may occur between proglottids of one worm or even in one proglottid. The fertilized eggs develop into an oncosphere larvae enclosing a hexacanth embryo with six hooks. The oncosphere consists of the hexacanth embryo enveloped by an embryonic membrane, an embryophore and an outer hard shell. In the terminal gravid proglottid, the uterus is packed with numerous oncospheres so that these segments are almost devoid of any other structures. The terminal gravid proglottids detach in groups of four or five and pass out of the body of the host along with the feces. Further development of the oncospheres do not occur until they enter the body of the intermediate host. This happens when an infected person defecates on an open ground and if the pigs, that is the intermediate host, happens to ingest the oncospheres. Within the intestine of the new host, the hexacanth embryos are released and they penetrate into the gut wall and finally reach the bloodstream and ultimately settling down in the muscles. In the muscles, the embryocyst give rise to the bladder worm or cysticerous stage. It is a saccular fluid filled stage with a small invaginated scolex. The pork infected with bladder worm appears spotted and is called measly pork. Further development of the parasite does not occur until it reaches the body of a divinity host again. If imperfectly cooked pork is consumed by an uninfected person, the highly resistant bladder worm enters their gut. The scrollex of each bladder worm gets inverted and gain attachment on the gut wall. By the budding of new proglottids in the neck region, a new worm is finally developed. Infection with an adult type worm is called tiniasis. Persons with severe infections generally suffer from diarrhea, weight loss and adverse reactions to the toxic waste from the worm. The worms can be easily eliminated using drugs. More serious conditions develop when the oncospheres accidentally reinfect the humans. In this case, man plays the role of an intermediate host and typical cysticercosis results. The incisment may happen in the muscles and even in more vital organs like heart, liver, brain and so on. Removal of cysticercus from the body is very difficult and is often fatal. Next, we will move on to the preventive measures. Sanitary disposal of human feces prevents the possibility of transmission of the parasite to the intermediate host. Proper cooking of the pork destroys the cysticerci, thereby eliminating the risk of transmission to humans. And by the use of appropriate anti-helminths, effectively eliminates the adult worm from the intestine of man. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe and share and hit the bell icon for notifications.